Hey guys, this is Nathan, and welcome back to FTB Beyond on the Creedcraft server. So I've been uh, having a lot of problems with this uh, mana system running out of seeds. So I've been manually harvesting some wheat here, and I thought it might be time to start kind of messing around a little bit with Agricraft. So these have the crop sticks, and... Uh, when you plant something in crop sticks, you can no longer use fertilizer on it. So that kind of sucks, but we need to get these fully grown. And once we do, then we place down a crop stick and then place another one on it. And this will allow for crossbreeding between the two plants that are on, in these other two sides of it. Now, in the previous version of the pack, it seemed that Agricraft was not functioning properly, but it sounds like it's been repaired in the current version, which is 1.1. So hopefully everything is working good there, but I'm going to have to let this slowly grow up, and uh, I'll work on that a little bit as time goes on, and uh, hopefully we can get some of the 10-10-10 wheat so that we get more... Uh, wheat return because I have been running the wheat through the sag mill and that does give us seeds It also gives us flour from ender IO which can be smelted into flour or into bread so we have tons of this flour and uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and just drop that in here Excuse me but so this will cook our bread three at a time and uh if we want to, then we can use this bread. Well, we can use it for honeyed slices, which is not great. But uh, we can also use it for some better things like footlongs. I believe there is uh, toast that we can make it, but the glowing bread is the good one. And glowing water is, yeah, it's not an overly easy recipe, but it's not going to be a difficult one either. Our biggest problem is going to be glowstone dust. The nether wart can be easily farmed. We already have a supply of water buckets in our refined storage system. And gunpowder we have quite a bit of, but we don't have a lot. Now as far as the gunpowder is concerned, we were having some major lag issues earlier on the server. And it turned out that it was my cursed earth spawners. So both of them, the one in the mining dimension and the one in the nether, have been disabled. The one in the mining dimension still is functional. All we have to do is plug the holes in the roof. But the one in the nether, I completely removed the cursed earth. So there is nothing currently in the nether. And I'm going to have to do a little research and experimentation to make sure that we can make a spawner that can be turned off in the nether. So, uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. Those had to be shut down. But uh, that's part of what you learn with modded. So uh, I'm going to be working on that stuff a little bit in between cuts. But what I want to continue working on today is getting this induction smelter so that we can have uh, the ore quadrupling on it. Now one thing that we need to do with the ore quadrupling, if we look up thermal expansion, we need the, uh, which would, the pyro concentrator, I think that's the, I think it's the pyro concentrator, no, it's the signalum upgrade that we were looking at. This requires cryothium dust, and that takes the blizz powder. Now, uh, Apache and I, which Apache is around here somewhere, uh, we have been kind of working together on that. Uh, I had caught a blizz over in the uh, whatever the snowy plains over here in a soul vial and he went ahead and oh, wrong portal he went ahead and uh, made a powered spawner for that if I can go the right direction so we set up a very simple box spawner for a powered or a box room for a powered spawner and you can hear this thing is still running but uh, we have a diamond spike at the bottom, which gives rare drops. And 
There's a hole in the ground here. What? And I have no blocks. Great. But so uh, we have a spower, a spowered, a powered spawner down here, and uh, that is dropping the blizz into this diamond spike, and then the stuff is getting sucked into here. Well, this is off currently, but we did run it for a little while earlier, and I did get some blizz rods. So hopefully we have enough stuff to make up that upgrade for the signalum so that we can get a little bit more upgrade space in the smelter. We also need to make that uh, pyro induction or whatever it is, the pyro pyro concentrator. And uh, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to, let's just see here, the blizz. We have five blizz rods. Now, I already did a little bit of checking on this, and I believe the pulverizer from Thermal Expansion is the best that we can do. It's the only thing that we can do short of crafting, and that will give us four blizz powder. So that should give us plenty. We're just going to go ahead and drop these in here real quick. Won't take real long. And somebody's been pulverizing some ores. But we need the blizz powder, so we're going to come back to the other stuff there later. Now we have the blizz powder, and uh, while I'm thinking about it, I am going to take off my ring of magnetization. need to get that flower that stops the ring around here, because I've had numerous times that other people have come over here, and the crafting system is screwed up because the magnet pulls the items away from it. But anyway, going back to here, we need the signalum upgrade. Well, we need signalum first. This takes the alloy smelter with copper, silver, and redstone. I believe we have everything. We might not have the silver yet. No, we don't. But uh, we do have the copper and the redstone, so we're going to grab some copper and some redstone. And then we'll just quickly grab some silver out of here and some sand. Where do we have sand? Right here. We'll run this stuff through the induction smelter real quick. This will give us some silver ingots. Now we do have the auxiliary sieve upgrade in here, which gives an extra chance of the auxiliary output because we are trying to get that rich flux or rich slag, I guess, as well. Now it looks like we are going to have to stop this from making our bread, but if we drop in the, the copper, what, can we not put it in there? Oh, it's on furnace. Let's go to alloys and we'll drop this in there. Now uh, we're going to need a couple of pieces of signalum. So let's go ahead and grab the last of that silver there. That should be a great deal plenty. Now this is taking a while. So I'm going to make a quick cut here and I'll come back once that's all cooked. So it has been a little bit of time since the last clip and this wheat in the crop sticks is growing really, really slowly. I have harvested everything else three times in that time frame. And yeah, these guys, they're still just taking their slow time. But uh, I did a few other things in between clips and I got a whole bunch of stuff made up here. I made the signalum. I also made some invar, some electrum, and I pulverized some obsidian. And the reason that I pulverized the obsidian, we are going to run that through the induction smelter with some lead. Now that is going to make hardened glass, and we are going to drop the rest of this obsidian in there. Now I believe this takes eight and one, eight pulverized obsidian and one lead to make two of the hardened glass. Now also we got a huge amount of the rich slag in that time. But we are going to be needing some of the hardened glass for a couple of these recipes. So that is why I grabbed that stuff. I also made up tons and tons of other ingots. And so, um, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of stuff there. Now we also have some pulverized ores in here. And some of that's going to be for crafting. And some of it we will just smelt again later. So uh, first off... We have the hardened upgrade kit, but this particular induction smelter is already upgraded to the hardened. But this would have taken uh, invar, a bronze gear, and some redstone. 
We can bypass that one, thankfully, so we will go to the Reinforced Upgrade Kit. Now this takes Electrum, a Silver Gear, and this is where that Hardened Glass is going to come in. Now Hardened Glass would appear to be able to take the place of Fused Quartz, which is good because, well, Quartz is not exactly cheap. So let's go ahead and make that real quick. So we need a silver gear that's going to take some silver ingots and iron. And I'm sorry, I just am burping like crazy right now. But uh, now we should be able to make this reinforced upgrade. And um, did that take fused quartz? Eh, whatever. Okay, so next up we need an electrum gear, signalum ingots, and this cryothium dust. Now, I believe we have everything that we need in here. We might not have enough of it. Well, we do right now. So we will go ahead and make up this Signalum upgrade. Oh, we need to make the gear. So we need the Electrum gear. We are definitely running out of iron here. So there's the Signalum upgrade. And finally, we do have the Resonant Upgrade Kit, and I was thinking about making this. Now, we do need the Lumium Ingots, and these can be made in the Alloy Smelter with Tin, Silver, and Glowstone. The other way to do it would be with Lumium Blend, and uh, yeah, I think we can just smelt that directly, but that would take Energized Glowstone. And energized Glowstone requires us to make the Magma Crucible, and um, have the glowstone dust run through there and it, yeah that's just kind of a pain so being able to do it in the uh, alloy smelter instead is a big plus so uh, for this we need to have tin silver and glowstone so uh, here's some tin here is some silver and the glowstone we do have a whole bunch of the dust so we'll just grab that and we'll drop this into the alloy smelter and it, it'll make some. I'm going to cut that stack down. That was 24 worth. That should be plenty. So that stuff will be processing. Now we should be able to just right click these onto the machine, I believe. I am not overly familiar with how thermal expansion works nowadays. I know how it used to work, but uh, I think this is thermal expansion 5. They've had some major changes to it, so let's see what happens here. If we uh, right click on here, yep, now block successfully upgraded. Now that is reinforced. Now we're going to go here with the signalum. Wow, nice. So. Um, we now have room for three augments, so that will help out a lot. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this pyro concentrator now. So we need some nickel plates. Now, I don't know, maybe it, the that would be, I think we're going to have to go and borrow uh, Kylo's set up over there. So let's just grab a couple of these because the smeltery over here in spawn got taken down. But so if we drop this stuff in here and um, this is another thing that could have been causing spawn or yeah problems with lag and that is that redstone clock let's grab a lever yeah we don't have any hmm. well i happen to know we don't have any sticks so we'll make up a stack of sticks drop those in there and then we will take sticks and cobblestone cobblestone is over here now i will just make a whole stack of these because well quite frankly we can never seem to have too many levers seem to use them in recipes a lot here but if we put a redstone lever on here and flip it on it turns that clock off now that is not causing lag but so we can pour out a nickel plate with molten nickel right no 
You're supposed to be able to. If we look at the uses on this stuff. Casting. Oh, we need a plate cast. Do we have a plate cast around here somewhere? Probably not. So what are our other options for those plates? Uh, what were we looking for this guy right here? So, Tech Reborn and Thermal Foundation. We have a compactor press. Well, I'm not going to be making that. We have the metal press from Immersive Engineering. Compressor from Tech Reborn, I believe. And then we can cast it with a plate cast. And we have to have a plate to do that. Embers Iron Plate. Hmm. Thermal Foundation Iron Plate. Oh, okay. We can, we can make that with a Forge Hammer. So we'll just need to throw some gold in there to make the plate cast. So that's pretty simple stuff. I think I'll do that off camera and I'll be back in a second. And back to it we are. So we need to make a Signalum gear. We need a redstone reception coil, which is going to take some Electrum. And, oh, I was afraid of that. We are out of Electrum. So uh, we'll grab a piece of gold and a piece of silver. Where did the silver go? There it is. So a piece of gold and a piece of silver, and that will make us some Electrum. We'll grab this out of here, and I guess we had silver in here. But uh, this will make a couple of pieces of Electrum. We have the Lumium. We even have some bread. So we better get that over here. So we have our Electrum now. It's going to make a conductance coil, which is something that we're going to need a lot of if we do anything with thermal expansion. So uh, we have our nickel plates, we have our fused quartz or hardened glass, and then we need the pyrothium dust. Now we should have everything for this in the system. So um, we're going to need to make a whole bunch of this because we're going to have to be smelting it down later. But I'll make that much for now. So there we go, the pyro concentrator upgrade. So uh, I'm not sure how this is going to affect the machine. Okay, augment successfully installed. So uh, fluid pyrothium must be supplied. So this has added a tank slot to the machine. And I suppose what we'll probably want to do is move this pulverizer so that we can put a magmatic crucible whatever whatever in the heck that thing is called what is that thing called where is it magma crucible not magmatic so uh this is going to be our next thing to make so we need a machine frame this is glass tin gear and iron and uh as usual we are running out of iron so hopefully this doesn't take too much so then we need a machine frame Okay, there's that. We need some nether bricks, which we have. We need a redstone reception coil, which is redstone and gold. We need another one of those conductance coils. So we are out of uh, Electrum again. And then we need some Invar gears. We need two of those. And uh, we are out of Invar now. So this is good that we've got this completed at the moment. Now, what I think I'm going to do right now, rather than trying to move all these machines around, I am just going to remove the pulverizer, put the magma crucible in its place. Now, we want to put the output on the side and not anywhere else. And then we want the input for fluids over here. Is there a slot for fluids? I see nothing. Okay, so um, I guess we will drop some of that pyrothium dust in there and just see, once it is melted down, is that going to go into the induction smelter? So this may take just a bit. So there it is. It is not going into here. Let's take a look at our configuration. This should be correct there. Did, um, yeah, we're on auto output is enabled. Let's try it. Oh, okay. So if we set this to blue, that will work. Okay. So now at this point, I think we're ready. 
I do believe we are ready to start quadrupling some ores. So um, let's go ahead and drop all of this stuff off. And we are going to grab a stack of iron ore. And we need some of this rich slag. So that's what we need to do this. All right, well, let's put one of each in here. No, it won't let me. What? Um, uses? Uh, where is it? Tectonic initiator. Rich slag, iron ore, blazing pyrothium, four iron ingots. Blazing pyrothium, iron ore, rich slag. Oh, okay. Well, it was just being irritating. So this should now give us four iron ingots and a piece of regular slag. Now this regular slag, we are going to be using that here in a little while to make phytogrow. Now this stuff can be used in a phytogenic isol or insulator to grow things. And uh, we're going to utilize that in a few growth operations to get something. I'm not sure what, if we're going to do seeds with the wheat or if we're going to do the nether wart. I have not decided yet, but we will have a use for this slag. Another use for it is making rock wool. And the rock wool, we really don't have a lot of use for at the moment. But this is quadrupling our iron. I didn't check how much blazing pyrothium does this take. Let's take a look here. Uh, 100 millibuckets. So each one of the dust that we smelt gives us uh, how much? Let's uh, turn the output off. 250. So four pieces of the dust will smelt 10 ore. Not bad. I think I can live with that. So this will quadruple this iron ore. That one stack of ore will turn into four stacks of ingots. So that is really awesome. I'm gonna let this go through and do its business. And then we'll come back and uh, I'm gonna check on the length of the episode too. So try to figure out what we can still do if we have time for anything else. So one thing that I find really interesting as I was looking through the recipes that we can use in this thermal uh, or induction smelter is for nether quartz ore. So if we take nether quartz ore and combine it with soul sand and blazing pyrothium, we get two blocks of quartz, quartz and a 25% chance of rich slag. So this is by far the best return that we can possibly get on another quartz ore. The next best is four. And I think that's from the induction smelter here. Yeah, a single block. Now I did not check. Now this uh, single block, can we very easily turn it back into, that's not very um, reliable. We can pour energized glowstone over it to make enlightened fused glass. Interesting. Uh, I believe, yeah, the immersive engineering crusher will automatically give it back to us. We have 13 pages of recipes here. Can we just craft it back? No. So the sag mill might actually be about our only option right now. Now we do have the aesthetic quartz and that is used in the display stand, which we need four of these for the empower. And the aesthetic green block, I don't remember how to make that. That's chiseled quartz, okay. So we would need a lot of quartz there, but it does give us a good chance for um, whatever uh, this rich slag also. So we do have our secondary sieve upgrade in here. So I think what I'm gonna do is let that do its business. And uh, right now we don't have a large call for the quartz, but we will here soon. And another thing that we can do with the quartz blocks is put them straight onto our sword. And we have three 
modifiers available. Let's go ahead and run a little bit more of that uh, soul sand and the quartz ore through there. We need half a stack of each. That'll give us a stack of blocks. So uh, let's go ahead and put that in there and we'll be able to add that to our sword here in a little while. But yeah, that is another option for use on those machines. So I wasn't just doing this for ore quadrupling. There are other things that we can do with it. And I believe there are some other fluids that we can put in here also. Um, yeah, show recipes. With the pyro concentrator, I think it's always the blazing pyrothium. But maybe, no, maybe there aren't other fluids. We used to be able to do something with the uh, gelid cryothium. Let's see here, where is the... Here's the cryothium dust. We also have erothium petrothium, which I know this one works in there too. Mana dust. Hmm. Okay, so there's our five dust that we can do something with. So the gelid cryothium we can make here coolant. Coolant for what? A thermal mediator? What the heck does that thing do? Improves operational speed of nearby machines. Okay. Well, that is really nice. I wonder how long it takes to use that. What's this 4 million TC? I have no idea what that means. The other stuff is just how to put it into a tank. Hmm. It's not an overly expensive machine, but I don't know that I want to make that. So we also have the erothium dust. Let's see, what does this uh Zephyrothia Whatever that word is, what is this for? Reactant dynamo is a fuel 1.25 million RF. Nice. What does it react with? I don't know. The petrothium dust that we can use to process ores as well and this what what's this this is used in the pulverizer instead of the induction smelter I knew there was another place that we could use stuff on ores so this one gives us the four to one it this is uh, about as good as any uh, whatever uh, fortune now this mana dust no recipe no uses interesting what's the point then so the blitz powder that's for the erothium dust yeah that's what I thought and this stuff what is a bas basals okay I think that's something that we haven't seen the Blizz is cold. Blitz is here in the intermediate, and I suppose the Basals is in a really hot environment. I don't know. But uh, yeah, there's definitely some stuff that we can do with thermal expansion, and that is a mod that we may be looking into a lot heavier later on. But I think I am going to say that's it for today. Because, uh, yeah, I think we're out of time. So, I'm um, going to say if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up. Let me know uh, if you are new to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. If you have any thoughts about what I've been working on or something that I could work on, uh, be sure to leave that down in the comments. Uh, if you are really enjoying what I do, be sure to help me out on Patreon. And I will see you next time. Bye.